Hey, what's up guys? TP here from Team Triple Drive and today I'm coming to you with my timely variant of the Gear Chronicle, so kind of the updated version of the deck. I'm sorry this took so long to get out. Uh, I was kind of focusing on other decks like Aquaforce, which you've seen me profile, Shadow Paladins, which you've also seen me profile. So this kind of took a backseat in terms of me getting cards because I felt the deck was so strong as it was. As it was. Uh, that I didn't really need to get the last pieces in that much. And then more testing happened and I realized I didn't quite need the pieces that I wanted originally. So I ended up with this deck. Now this deck's focus is obviously time leap. So you poke your opponent a little more uh, than the control deck. And that can have a big significance in terms of their hand reduction. But this deck also focuses on maintaining good hand. There is a variant that I can think about building and I'm going to try and build probably post the whole um, device collection thing. Which will be a lot more aggressive than this variant. This variant is already aggressive. It's time leap, pokes you the, at your opponent a lot more. But I can think of a build that is going to have uh, less hand but it's going to poke for more. So it's gonna, instead of forcing 5k shields each time, for, force a 10k shield per se. So, without further ado, I'll get into this deck profile. So yeah, this is a lot more hand oriented, but yet still assaulting. First we play four of the Bunshin, Kronja Dragon. Honestly, I really like this art. A lot of people prefer the new one. I much prefer this. He's great. You need him for next stage. You need him for Metallica Phoenix. So that's why the follow of grade 3 is Bally. I did test Gear Eagle. I did get four of them in. My problem with Gear Eagle is that it's not Chrono Jet. <laughs> that's literally the problem with it. The fact that it's not Chrono Jet means it's bad. And I'm gonna buy my turn probably once Chrono Fan Tiger comes in, because I think, honestly, Chrono Fan is gonna be good enough so that Chrono Jet, Chrono Fan Hybrid is gonna be the best. But at the moment, Gear Eagle is not good enough to compensate for the fact that it's not Chrono Jet. That is why we play Bali to make sure we get Chrono Jet for all of our amazing strides. For grade twos, we play. Four, History Maker Dragon. This card is the one of the main cards you have in the deck. It is one of your combo pieces. Uh, it's one of the things that allows you to swing and poke for a lot in this deck. So yeah, it is very, very good. Definitely play it at four. As well as this other card that I play. Now, I'm gonna probably get a lot of people disagreeing with me, but I play four of Upstream Dragon. Now, I know, a lot of people give me hate because but you only need three, it's bleh, whatever your reasons are. I'm going to explain to you my reason why I do play. I don't, at any time, I only want Upstream and History Maker on the front row because they're the two combo cards. Upstream swings, gets a great one. History Maker swings, gets History Maker. That History Maker swings, gets your grade three. This is the strongest combo at the moment you can perform to poke out the most guard. If they get a drive, uh, sorry, a damage, a trigger check, and they get the trigger on that, um, then yes, it kind of screws up the combo. But then you can start poking the rear guards if you did not rewind them all. Uh, but this is an amazing card because it's not only, not only is it a toolboxer for a grade one. It's also a 13k attack on its own, making this card probably the second most powerful grade 2 in the deck. Uh, actually, that's not a big deal because I only play three of them, three different ones. Um, I play then two Calbums. Now, th these can be honestly replaced for 10k Vanillas if you want. I have tried 10k Vanillas, and yes, they were pretty good. You can you probably uh, see me play them if you watched our Maiden of Battle. 10Ks, they are quite good in the deck because they provide you body against a assault. So if you're playing against Aquaforce, their title assaults don't do that much against you, uh, etc. But I like this because this is potentially an early starter killer. Now, if I go into a tournament, 
into like Springfest or something, I'm going to replace this for 10 k's. Although saying that, when Springfest is out, Set 7 is out, so the deck will probably be quite a bit different. But if Springfest was earlier, like I know for some people it's coming up now or already been, um, then I would personally say go safe because you can rewind a bit later, but you can't get unrushed later. So, yeah. Uh, for grade ones, I play for Arlem. You can blast a bit in this deck. Uh, it's manageable, but at the same time, you kind of want it always available. On your big turn, you use up three can blasts. That's not a lot, considering there are decks that, for their just one skill, use up two. This deck, for your whole turn, your strongest turn, you can, which I can picture, use up three. Maybe four, if you want to use Chrono Jet skill as well. I actually rarely use this skill unless there's something very, very annoying. Because usually, I wait for my opponent to commit field and field wipe them. Uh, so, yeah. Arlem is there to kind of refund the cost so you can make those strong turns more than once. Then we'll play four Time Break Dragon. This card is insane. Uh, I kind of forgot to talk about Clock Fencer and the reason I don't play him, but I guess now is a good time. He is virtually the Great One Clock Fencer. Well, well, he is a Great One Clock Fencer basically, because their abilities are exactly the same, except he's a Great One. Now, why does that warrant me playing four of him and none of Clock Fencers? Well, Clock Fencer is not something you want in your front row. It can't boost, therefore you can't just leave it in the front uh, in the back row. And since you, the only two cards you want in the front row are History Maker and Upstream. Whoops, that's another History Maker. Uh, a History Maker and Upstream. You do not want Clock Fences. Now, I admit that my deck will change probably come set 7. So while you can, guys, get in Clock Fences. Because I reckon they will shoot up in price solely because of the new stride. The one that rewinds up to the number of cards in the bind zone and gains plus 10k plus a crit because Cloak Fencer is a, something that binds without you minus in. You time leap, that's still a bind, even though that's until the end of the turn, that is still a bind. And you still get units out, you still toolbox the deck. Uh, time break is still going to be insane. I mean, I don't know about the new cards, the new support might completely overshadow these. But at the moment, clock fences are quite cheap for you to just get them just in case, I reckon. So, he's great because you can get upstreams up with him, you can make amazing early game combos, like first stride combo I'll show you in a bit. So yeah, definitely, definitely a very good card. Then I played three star enablers. I used to play four, I wanted to make sure that I strode, although there's, I just could not play for. I needed more space. I need to play four time breaks. I need to play the other grade ones that I do play. I already, if you notice, I only play ten grade threes. Grade threes, grade twos. Uh, because I need the grade one space. The grade ones are so powerful in this deck. Melum is one of those powerful grade ones. When she attacks, you can give, uh, you can have her gain plus 4k. If she does, she returns to the deck and searches you out for a grade zero. That's insane, because she's an 11k attack on her own, being a grade 1. And then she also tools, toolbox for grade 0. Uh, again, you will see why that's amazing in a second. Finish up grade 1, I play 1 GG. This is, as I said, the draw build of the deck. You draw a lot more cards than in the more aggressive version that I'm kind of considering at the moment. So GG is quite abusable, because you can timely appear into grade 2, say... Um, Clock Fencer, Clock Fencer, not Clock Fencer, what, History Maker, I'm sorry, uh, History Maker. Uh, so, one of your combo pieces is on the field now, thanks to her, and when she comes back, you can use her ability again, because it doesn't require from hand or from deck or anything, you just, when she's placed, Soul Blast 2, draw a card, abusable. And you can use her usually two times a game, rarely three but it is possible that you play, uh, that you get to use three of her, well, her three times. For the zeros, we play two Chrono Dragon, one as a starter, one in the deck. This can be searched out with Melum. Melum is amazing for that. 
because you can swing with Melum, get her back, get Chrono Dran, swing with one of your strides, time or history maker, time leap the Chrono Dran into another column. It's just so strong. Then we'll play for the triggers for heal. Uluru Bay, she's so good, she's even a G Guardian. Uh, four of Heart Thump Workers. This card is quite great. Another thing that I really like about Melum, I, once I was running low on hands and I couldn't time leap or anything during the battle phase. Or at least couldn't time leap what I, uh, the other card that I wanted. So I got him out. And then on the Vanguard swing, he went into the soul. I drew a card. My Vanguard game plus 5k. And that free card saved me because now, uh, yes, I minus a crit from the deck, but I had an extra card in hand. I, I'm pretty sure that game, uh, when I played it, it did save me. So I do really like this card. Then I play three, six more crits. So total of ten crits. If you watched my Shadow Pals and Deck profile, if you didn't, go and watch it after this. I said that. In none of my decks do I play drop triggers anymore. This is it. This is a deck, this is another one of my decks which I don't play drop triggers in. Reason being, I want to bump my opponent up to as high damage as possibly can by the time I can use next stage. Once I can use next stage and do my combo, I am going for the kill. And having crit triggers, stacking them on rear guards, because next stage disappears. You already got can gain plus 5k. Okay, your opponent will, if they're at 4 damage, say, will be able to take that. Now it has a crit, they'll need to bank on a heal trigger in order to survive. So crits are much more pressure and this deck can actually keep enough hand. I've tested this a lot and at no point was I feeling like oh damn I wish I had draw triggers, I don't get enough hand. No no no, the fact that they're 10k's is great because you have more 10k shields in deck and they're pressure so your opponent's gonna be either guarding more or well, yeah, got him more probably. I'm being at high damage, either way you win. Um, and also, when you use your draw abilities, like GG, say you drew into a draw trigger before with GG, that's a 5k shield, now you draw into a 10k shield. Either way, you lose a trigger, yes, but this time you get a 10k shield instead of a 5k shield. And to finish off, I play 2, Uruwata. Uwata is this card that also allows you to control draw. The thing that I'd never realized um, about him is when you draw two cards, you choose any card from your hand and send it back to the deck. This is amazing for fixing up hands because you can draw two amazing cards from him and then send, say you have too many great threes which you don't need, you send that back to the deck. Or say you want to send a crit trigger back or whatnot. Or a combo piece such as uh, GG uh, for whatever reason. You can do that with him. You can fix hands. I before thought that you look at top two, add one, return one, kind of like OTT style. But no, it is literally draw two, send any card from your hand back to the deck. So he's amazing. He is that thing that allows you to keep drawing. The thing that I like about this deck, it's a controlled draw. I want to draw, I use him or her. Or her. If I don't, I don't. If I don't need to draw, I can just go for more offensive plays rather than defensive. So that's what I really like. As opposed to having draw triggers that rely you on drawing cards, which is like, oh, please get that one out of my four draw triggers or one out of my two if you play two in the deck. So yeah, really, really good. A shout out to my friend Andrew who actually kept reminding me about this I guess to the point where I was like I need to test this out so this is really good really a good card onto the strides so this is obviously pre May 20th as I've mentioned a few times I think already uh, so the strides are going to change quite dramatically come May 20th but for now we'll play one Metallica Phoenix this card is going to be your first try 90% of the time because Chrome Dran is so abusable. Uh, I'll show you now a quick combo, I guess. Now this is a good time, server. You need a Chrome Jet Heart. So this is kind of where Bali comes in useful. Um, because it's not an on-strike skill, it's on attack, you have the chance to meet, meet the condition of Chrome Jet Heart with Bali. Um, with Bali, 
I guess I should give you a heads up. It does not work with things like um, uphill Pegasus. So, because, yes, it's an auto when something starts on top of it, but it gives the Vanguard an axe skill, which can be activated during the main phase to switch hearts. So while Bali grants the skill as an auto, the skill that it grants is an act skill which cannot be used during the main phase, which means you can, no, you cannot switch hearts and then use Chrono Jet skill to rewind something. It, you're already during the main phase, you've strode ages ago, like in a whole different phase. So yeah, that's for something, that's something for you to be aware of. Okay, so, oh shit, oh fuck, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, everything is still good. Uh, okay, so, we have, I will find you, we have a Chrono Dran. You want your Chrono Drans preferably to be there, really. It kind of leaves everything open then. Uh, the conditions you need is this, Chrono Dran, and I will find you. Um, time break. So, your first step. Call time break here. Time leave Chrono Drown. Might as well change skill. So you put your Chrono Drown to soul. You get a Chrono Jet Dragon out. And also you, the time leap unit that you want is Melon. Cool. Yeah, that's cool. So battle phase. Melon attacks. Skill plus 4k. Whatever they can guard, no guard, doesn't matter. At the end of the battle. She goes back to the deck, and you get out another Chrono Dran. Can get out here. Uh, it comes at rest. Doesn't matter. Oh, actually, yeah, it's probably best if first Chrono Dran is behind the Vanguard because then you can have a booster here for a decent column. Um, so your Chrono Dran comes here. Metallica Phoenix attacks. Metallica Phoenix's skill. You f uh, flip up. The other strike that we play, which is Chrono's Command, Time Leap, Chrono Dran, and get another Chrono Jet out. And then with Chrono, uh, with the Time Leap thing, you get out a GG. Then you Soul Blast 2, you draw 1. Now, you've got on a field, playable field. Two of which cards will return to your hand for future striding from just placing down one card. And you also drew a card. Then next turn, she goes back, uh, at the end of the turn, sorry, she goes back to the deck so you can use her again. You can time leap into her again. And you can soul pass again because you're going to have a grade one and a grade uh, two in your soul as well from riding up. So, this is a kind of first, uh, first turn dream combo that you can do with Metallica Phoenix. And as I said, we flip up the Chronos Command. Chronos Command is literally there just to be flipped up. Uh, I think it's been only like three times that I've ever used them. I've played this deck a lot, guys. I've played it even the same um, Great Four lineup in my control variant. I've only flipped him face up, sorry, I've only rode into him about three times probably because I was really desperate to kill my opponent's board and whatnot. So, yeah. He, he's decent. I guess in emergencies you can stride into him. But usually you flip him face up for Revolution. Revolution's ability. When he's placed in the Vanguard Circle, Cannon Blast 1, rewind everything but two of your units if you have this face up. If not, you rewind literally everything. Uh, this is so good. Just, your opponent thinks he has a fuel. They don't. They think, oh, because you're playing Time Leap, you can't return the whole field, you can. It's literally a matter of when you want to. Cool story. I was playing against Shadow Paladin. And they went... They were winning, I'm not gonna lie. They critted me a lot because they were playing the 12 crit variant. Um, they were at a big advantage in terms of hand size because they played Aura Geyser, they had a full field. So I thought, okay, I can't win this turn. Even if I go next stage, he has a ridiculous hand, I can't win. I'll go into Revolution, wreck his field, he has nothing left in his field. And then I do my combo that I showed you 
um, with upstream and his shoemaker, which eats his hand. So he now has no cars left in hand. He could have lived. He could have lived that turn, but he had no cars left in hand, which means he couldn't stride. Um, and he was at quite high damage. And he just scooped because he had no field, no cards left in hand. I had very few cards in hand, even after the triple drive thing, that was literally the only thing I had left, maybe one extra card. Uh, so if I didn't wipe his field, he probably would have still won. Because I think I was in five damage because of the critical triggers. And then to finish, the stride deck, the stride zone, I play for next stage. Next stage is such a strong card. It is the card that brought Gear Chronicle from not being a thing in the competitive meta to being a very, very strong thing in the competitive meta. Top in, in top threes pretty much all the time. So, very strong card. It stops your opponents from Perfect Guard in the second swing thanks to Chrome Jet's Jam Break. It's a, virtually a restander. And yeah, so very, very good card. This is another reason why we want to have Chrome Jet Heart. If we played Eagle, we would need to rely on actually drawing our Chrono Jets um, in order to be able to ride in time for next stage. That's another reason to play Bali. You need your next stages. Um, I think I've showed you all the kind of combos. You can sort of adjust them in order depending if you want to do more assaults or draws so the whole history maker combo uh, you might want to adjust it to get Uwatara out or uh, GG out to get the draws off um, Uwatara is just such a beautiful card because we we can either have it Cannabust 1 um, Time Leap into a grade 1 so that can be GG or Melum that's a funny combo, actually. Yeah. Say you have Melum, uh, sorry, say you have History Maker out, and you have Uwata, and you have Time Break. You go Time Break into Melum. Time Break's, uh, sorry, Uwata skill. So you went to Melum. Uh, Chrome Jets Vanguard doesn't matter. You Say you strode and stuff, but you go to Melum. Uwata skill, you draw two, return one from hand back to the deck. Battle phase, 11. You can call time break here if you don't have another boost, I guess. 11. Returns back to the deck. Get this out. 16. Cannon Blast 1. Time leap into another grade 1. Can be another Melon. Again, draw 2. Send 1 back to the deck. This deck has ridiculous combos. Um, but yeah, this has been it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video, and... Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. This is DP from Team Triple Drive signing out.